people can watch it later. All right, so uh, we talked obviously a few times about a pandemic, what's going on around us and how these are, are signs for people. And I wanted to kind of reflect on some of that and refresh our memories uh, a bit. It's a good reminder for all of us. So in one of our um, Youth as Change Agents discussions with the brother Mohammed Twaisi, we talked about um, four interesting concepts that we have in our dean that he brought to our attention and the way he presented it was, was kind of interesting. And uh, I summarized them here into four points. The first one, they all start with um, the sound of the, the T letter in English. Uh, first one uh, means critical thinking, pondering, reflection, and thought leadership. It's kind of mentioned the Quran a few times here and there. Anyone remember what that is? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about some of his signs in the Quran, then he says, Afada. What does in Arabic critical thinking mean? We also use that same word uh, when we talk about like cooking, like uh, someone is putting ingredients together and doing it very precisely to get this nice meal, you know, done. So he says, What Afada yatadabbarun? Do they not ponder on the Qur'an? Do they not ponder on the creation? Tadabbur, right? And this is an important quality for anyone, really, but especially a believer, because that's how you, you think about things critically. That's how you find the truth, is you question the status quo. You question what's, your, what's going on. All right, what about the next one? That's really easy. Piety. Also starts with a ta. Come on, someone's got to know this. All right, don't use Google Translate. <laughs> Taqwa, yeah, absolutely. So now you have tadabur, you're critically thinking about things. You are God conscious, that makes you very powerful. It makes you someone, so you're, you're critical thinking. There are a lot of critical thinkers out there, but unfortunately some of them go astray. They come up with their own philosophies and their own ways of doing things things, um, including worshiping their, their Lord. But if you have tadabbur, which is a good, important quality, and taqwa, you're conscious of God, those two make the person very empowered. And uh, one of the things that person can do is going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is called, when someone takes a U-turn and goes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what do you call that? Tawbah, right? So we can do tawbah. We can recognize that, hey, we need to do tawbah. We need to call upon Allah the way he taught us to do that. And uh, one of the things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught Adam after he ate from the tree was tawbah, is how to, um, how to seek repentance, because again, Adam didn't know. And then lastly, if we do that, we will be uh, obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will be doing ta'ah. Right, so those are four qualities that are really important if we want to be truly able to change ourselves and then hence other things around us. And we uh, we know from Surah Al-Baqarah um, that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala gave us the news that we will be tested and that the test will come in this form or one of these multiple forms. what khawf, fear, and anxiety. And we see that around us today. Some people are, are anxious, they're, they're fearful about their jobs, their income, their, their health. And decrease in your wealth. And your souls, meaning you lose loved ones. And provisions, you know, things that you have, uh, facilities that you have. But give glad tidings for the patient. So the believers know that this is gonna happen but they accept it with content. They accept it with, with patience. They're not worried you know, overly about it. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us an example of what human beings do when they come into a, a crisis situation. So he gave us here an example of a group of people who are on, uh, on earth or in the ocean, in the sea, on a ship, you know, going through, um, through the space, uh, with a very gentle wind. 
إذا كنتم في الفلك وجرينا بهم بريح طيبة and this ship will move, will, will swiftly go with a very gentle wind وفرحوا بها and they were so happy they were so happy about their highways they were so happy about their oceans their routes, their airplane routes they were so happy about moving around the planet in a very easy way but then what happened? جاءت هريح عاصف a sudden thunderstorm has come upon this ship that's moving with the wind that's gentle. وَجَاءَهُمُ الْمَوْجُ مِنْ كُلِّ مَكَانِ And the waves are now coming from every direction, not just from one side of, of the ship, but from the front, from the back, from, from, from every place. وَظَنُّوا أَنَّهُمْ أُحِيطَ بِهُمْ And now they have uh, recognized that they have been surrounded by this difficulty, by this serious situation. So what did they do? They raised their hands to Allah so sincere, saying, Oh God, oh Allah, bring us out of this, this difficult situation. We're about to drown. Our airplane is about to fall out of the sky. Or my truck is out, about to get off of this highway. If you save us, if, uh, if you save us from this, we will be thankful. So what happens? Allah indeed saves them, but then they go back to their uh, their ways. So in summary, how do we handle situations like this? We look at it. It's got to intrigue our our thought, this, this whole pandemic and things similar to it, right? Us not being able to pray in the masjid. That has to, to trigger a thought. It's not just we're not going to the masjid because of the virus. No, there's a deeper thought. There's a deeper reason behind it. And the believer needs to think about it. Why am I being prevented? By Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who wants people to worship him, why is he preventing them from worshiping him? Right? There's something going on there. We need to, to uncover it. So let's watch this quick video. It's really short, but I thought it was interesting. And uh, I intentionally went out to find a video that's by non-Muslims. Can you hear the audio? Can you guys hear the audio? You can't hear the audio. Are you able to see? Are you seeing the slides? Yes, I can see the slides. But you, can, but you can't see the video. Okay. There is no audio. Let me try something a little different here. Tell me if you can hear it now. Uh, once it comes up. You hear it? Can you hear the audio? Yes. Okay. All right, cool. Let's uh, watch it here. No podemos verte. Claro, we mean that you feel the union of soldiers and you are depriving us of liberty. Ci stai privando della gioia di abbracciarci. De darnos besos. Ci sarei io mi dire. Tu hai chiesto a tutti mi tanto quindi. Come what bro? Lo so dove sei. Miedo. Non sa me strashne. Quanti parazzi la molto am. Ni tu ho già la fame da scendi. Che dico corona. Déjame decirte. Respect for others. My friends. And if I have to go into the battlefield. To help the one who really needs it. Papa, come to me, call out my hand. I will do this with a lot of care. Only when necessary. Samantha, I want to have the hand of my family at home. Come on, come on, come on. I will be dancing. I will arrange it for doing exercise. I will be able to sleep. Manita, amen. In the responsibility and solidarity of humanity. I will be able to do it. For doctors and nurses. 
nossos heróis. Real heroes. And in God. Even if it does not really seem. Er hat alles unter Kontrolle. Sehr richtig der Politik. Hier, wir sind in Kontrolle. Sim, querido Coronavirus. Dumnezeu de tine Kontrolle. Eli, tiene el Kontrolle. Da, Giovanna Schmitta. Sehr richtig der Politik. Eli, está in Kontrolle. All right, so what do we get out of this video? Some thoughts. Yeah, go back here. Any thoughts that come to mind when you watch this video? I feel like it's like good thoughts uh, and also kind of like at the beginning. It was weird because they say I have faith in soldiers and the doctors and whatnot, and then like um, he's like telling John. So I don't know. Weird how. I feel like it's on both sides where it's like it's either like you know God is in control, so it's like that's what we should be focused on, and then also it's. I guess also preaching we have trust in like the soldiers and the nurses and things like that. I think it was on both sides of the focus. Okay. So they're kind of uh, saying they have faith in God, but they also have faith in taking the means, right? Which is uh, which is a good balanced approach. I mean, even as Muslims we can't just sit back and make dua and that's it. We have to get up seven o'clock in the morning, go to good morning Eliad, do work. So we can see results, right? But we we do it with the understanding, with the faith that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will help us, right? All right. What else caught your attention? Someone else. Say that again, Zena. Okay, there's diversity in the people that are speaking, all right, are talking, that's great. All right, what else? They kind of uh, recognize the, what's going on, right? They recognize that this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala controls, that he brought these soldiers. They even referred to the virus as soldiers, just like we Muslims refer to the, uh, to the virus. Right, Allah in his book, he says what? He would send his soldiers upon mankind to remind them of his existence or to teach them lessons or to cleanse them or whatever. So we as Muslims also recognize the virus to be a soldier of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a creation of Allah. It is, um, it is a creation that constantly does tasbih to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just like everything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created. We had one good morning earlier, one Saturday. We talked about um, how everything Allah creates, uh, give, praises him and, and follows his commands and, and, and so forth. So the interesting thing here that um, they recognize, they, they share a lot of values that we share as, as Muslims. This was obviously uh, a video by a church, right? They recognize God exists. They recognize that this is a test from God. They recognize that they have to take the means to fight this virus. And they recognize that at the end of the day, God is in control. And when he wills for the virus to be lifted, it, it will be lifted. So very similar, almost identical beliefs and concepts to us as believers. The only one thing that is not identical is what? What are they missing? What is the thing that differentiates them from you? What differentiates us from, from a group of people like the group we just watched? They share the same values. They said they were going to look after their neighbor. Wasn't that something the Prophet Sallallahu preached? He said, Jibreel came to me and commanded me to take care of 40 of my neighbors, up to 40 of my neighbors from each direction. You have 40 houses to your left, to your right, to the north, to the south. You got it. These are all people you need to take care of, right? Didn't he say take care of, of the elders? Didn't he say take care of the, the needy? I mean, this is what these people are saying. 
right? They're saying that God is in control. So what are they missing? What makes us different than these people? Say that again. Come on, guys. Someone think about this. Say that. Mm -hmm. All right, their intention is good. They want to do good for the world, right? They intend good. I mean, no one on this video intended anything evil. They all said this is a break from the hustling of life. This is a time to sit down and enjoy my family that I have been deprived from for so long. This is a time to come back and, and think about life and have a purpose and do all these good things. But they're missing a fundamental thing that differentiates a Muslim from a non-Muslim. Maybe they were not thinking of what is after this. Like they believe that um, whatever happens, even if it's a bad thing, will work for the better thing. Okay, so maybe they don't have the perspective of the hereafter. All right, that's that's true. It wasn't kind of very clear in the video, but sure. But what else are they missing? There's such a huge thing by definition. A Muslim is what? A tawheed. A tawheed, right? Muslim is someone who submits. So without that, um, we're not a Muslim, right? And um, I'm gonna skip this, this slide here. But uh, this is what they're missing. They're missing There's a book that there's no doubt in it. And that book must be followed. It's, it's not optional, right? And this is what differentiates a Muslim from someone else. Someone else could have the exact same values that a Muslim has. They take care of their parents. They're very respectful. They're very modest. They're humble. They, they're, uh, they don't have uh, relationships with opposite gender that's inappropriate. Uh, they don't uh, abuse people. They're kind. They take care of the orphans. Uh, they tutor. They mentor. They can do every single thing Ilya's is doing. And they can even do it better. But what they're not doing is doing it with intention that they have to do it per the requirements and the regulations set by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you can't, we can't go in some corner in our house and start worshiping Allah in our own way. We can't come up with a, an innovative way of, of praying. We can't come up with a new way of, of fasting, right? We can't say, all right, I'm going to fast every 10 days of each month, and this is how I'm going to fast. But you can't, right? So this book must be followed letter by letter because he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the one who created us, and he knows what's best for us. He knows how we should worship him, and he told us about that in his book. Right? What, what differentiates a Muslim from other people, they worship Allah in their own ways. And some of them become astray, dhalin, because of that. And some do it with rebellion. They say, we're not worshiping him this way. We're worshiping him a different way because we feel that's better. That makes us feel better. And they're using their intellect to kind of dismiss the Quran. So this is what, what uh, differentiates us. And it's really important, especially in these difficult times, uh, I still see some of us um, not understanding the pandemic we're in, right? We're not understanding the situation we're in. We're up late playing video games and as if this is some vacation or we're not changing our ways or we're just waiting patiently for this to get over so I can go back to, to my campus and party or see friends or do whatever you know my lifestyle was prior to to this right so this is really a wake-up call for all of us this is the opportunity that you want to seize to embrace this challenge right we're at home this is a challenge people are dying around us economy is at a halt i mean the the world the, the planet the environment the 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 pollution in the air has drastically changed. Cities around the world, Beijing, Karachi, Cairo, you, know, you can see the sun now. I mean, they used to have smog that you couldn't see the sun. Now they're finding animals, wild animals, starting to roam the cities. They're seeing bears in Wyoming come out and walk in neighborhoods. They're seeing foxes in big cities. They're seeing uh, like Paris and things like that. They're seeing now on the oceans and, and the, um, 
the shores of the different resorts, they're seeing birds that come and spend the whole day, thousands of birds, which they could not do before because people were occupying this space, right? In other words, the planet is starting to come back to what it should be, right? That harmony of the different species and the care that mankind should be taking care of this planet as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us. So these are all signs and we really, really need to seize this opportunity. This is an opportunity of a lifetime. How many times does a pandemic like this hit the planet? Maybe once every century. And for those of us who still don't understand that and see it differently, we're losing big time. As the Prophet ﷺ said in a hadith, a person, a believer will come out of this pandemic, a ta'un, where he's either a success you know, story and he has guaranteed a place in Jannah or a loser where he lost on this opportunity. Just want to take this to share it with, with everyone, opportunity to, to remind myself and everyone. Um, let's be patient, but let's also open up our eyes and, and see reality. And with this, inshallah, we'll close. I know we took a little longer today. Jazakumullah khairan.